Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. Uh, whether you regularly worship with us or are visiting us today, we are glad that you are here. Uh, a couple of announcements. First of all, just a heads up. Um, normally at this service, we are not worried about live streaming issues, but our live stream of our first service failed this morning, partway through the service. So we are live streaming again, the camera's up front here. So you may notice that as you are um, moving around today. Welcome to those of you who are finding us online um, at a different time than normal today. Uh, also, uh, we are having our All Saints garage sale on Friday and Saturday, May 20th and 21st. Uh, all proceeds from that sale will go to help um, All Saints in our ministries. And you are welcome to bring donations anytime. The office is open. Uh, we are accepting all donations in a room down the hallway over here. Um, if you would like to pre-sort your donations, you may have noticed on your way in that there are lots of different classrooms that are labeled for different categories of items for that sale. So you're welcome to pre-sort them into those rooms. But if not, you can drop everything in a room that is marked down in this hallway as well. Um, on that note, we are also looking for volunteers to help us sort into rooms and then sort the stuff that is in those rooms so that we are ready for that sale in a couple of weeks. Uh, there are lots of ways that you can do that. You can just drop by uh, when the office is open to help with that. Uh, there, you can also sign up to be a part of that uh, through our weekly email. Um, and if you are not getting those emails, I invite you to contact our church office to be added to those. Um, just a note of thanks to Roxy and Gary Creasel, who joined me over the past couple of days. From Bishop Joy and others about uh, how our synod is doing right now and doing the work of the synod at that annual meeting. And so we're grateful for uh, their time to be a part of that. Um, and grateful to hear uh, from other congregations in South Central Wisconsin uh, about how things are going and uh, be refreshed with some new ideas in that as well. Uh, the, our stewardship team has been working to help us think about stewardship in some new and different ways. And so we are beginning a series of videos called Living Abundantly. Uh, and those videos are from people who are a part of All Saints or connected to All Saints uh, who are helping us think about how they are living out of the abundance that God has given them. Um, many of you may remember Yana, who was the music director here for several years. Uh, she has she left just about the time that I was arriving. Um, and so I don't know her as well as maybe some of you do, but I know lots of you have been asking about Yana over the past couple of months. Um, Yana is originally from Ukraine and still has lots of family and friends there. She is now living in Munich, Germany. Um, but today we have uh, a little video from her with some greetings as well as uh, some notes about how she is living out her faith in Jesus um, in, in the ways that she is doing the things she can to help in Ukraine. And so I invite you to um, hear from Miana.
mixing the water, so they kind of had to leave. But, you know, my mom, the rest was pets, so um, she had to, she didn't want to leave 20 dogs behind, and I think they rescued more as people were leaving. Um, so um, I helped her and spent some money for that so that they could uh, take care of more animals and just make sure that, you know, we help anybody we can, families and, um, that are staying at my mom's house right now. Um, so the house is
It's going to be done. her faith in Jesus and living abundantly in the ways that she can um, and an invitation for us to do the same whether that is helping her with what she is doing or finding our own ways um, to live our abundant lives um, more of those videos and passing the hand of friendship pads there in the front row of your section and so um, invite you if since there's not anyone in our front rows if you would grab those and pass them back um, to the back they'll be collected back there um, as a part or as, at some point during worship today um, also an invitation to all to join us at the lord's table as we celebrate holy communion in the waters of baptism, we have passed over from death to life with Jesus Christ, and we are a new creation. For this saving mystery and for this water, let us bless God, who was and is, who is to come. We thank you, God, for your river of life, flowing freely from your throne, through the earth, through the city, through every living thing. You rescued Noah and his family from the flood. You opened wide the sea for the Israelites. Now in these waters you flood us with mercy, and our sin is drowned forever. You open the gate of righteousness, and we pass safely through. In Jesus Christ, you calm and trouble the waters. You nourish us and enclose us in safety. You call us forth and send us out in lush and barren places you are with us you have become our salvation now breathe upon this water and awaken your church once more claim us again as your beloved and holy people quench our thirst cleanse our hearts wipe away every tear to you our beginning and our end our shepherd and lamb be honor, glory, praise, and thanksgiving, now and forever. Amen.
O God of peace, you brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep. By your eternal covenant, make us complete in everything good, that we may do your will, and work among us all that is well-pleasing in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Some of you may recognize me. I'm in from North Carolina for a little bit. Um, I've been to this church for all of my life, but uh, I'll be reading your scripture for today. So. Your first reading is Acts 9, 36 through 43. I'm reading from Acts. Now in Joppa, there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha, which in Greek is Dorcas. She was devoted to good works and acts of charity. At the time, she became ill and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in a room upstairs. Since Lydia was near Joppa, the disciples who heard that Peter was here, there, sent two men to him with the request, Please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them. When he arrived... They took him to the room upstairs, and all the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing tunics and other clothing that Dorcas had made while they, she was with them. Peter put all of them outside, and then knelt down and prayed. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. Then she opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. She gave her his hand and helped her up. Then calling the saints and widows, he showed her to be alive. This became known throughout Joppa, as many believed in the Lord. Meanwhile, he stayed in Joppa for some time with, certain, with a certain Simon, Simon, a tanner. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your second reading is from Revelation 7, 9 through 17. A reading from Revelation. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation become, belongs to our God, who is seated at the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne, and around the elders, the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, singing, Amen, blessings and glory and wisdom, and thanksgiving and honor, and power and might. Be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressing me, saying, Who are these robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and, day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to the springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.
gospel for today comes from the 10th chapter of John. The Holy Gospel according to John. At that time, the festival of the dedication took place in Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple, in the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I have told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name testify to me, but you do not believe, because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. What the Father has given me is greater than all else, and no one can snatch it out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to God. You may be seated. One of the guilty pleasures in our house right now is the show, The Masked Singer. If you haven't watched it, it is celebrities from across the spectrum, athletes, actors, singers, even some politicians, who dress up in crazy costumes and then sing a song. There's a panel of judges, and their job is to figure out who it is behind the mask. There are clues given every week, which may or may not be very helpful, but it is entertaining to not only try to figure out who they are um, and to hear some of them are very talented musicians, even if that's not their profession, others not so much, Um, but it is fun to listen to them, um, even if it has made me feel a little bit old and out of touch sometimes with the people that they have identified as celebrities. (laughs) Maybe you are not a Mass Singer fan, but maybe you have had an experience where you've been watching a movie, where you heard a voice and you knew who it was before you saw a face. Or maybe with an animated movie, you're watching and you know you recognize that voice, but you can't quite place it. My husband, Stephen, is way better at figuring out voices than I am. He will simply turn his head away from the screen for a minute and listen just to the voice without the distraction of the face that it is attached to and can usually figure out who that voice belongs to. I, on the other hand, if I'm at the theater, have to wait for the credits (laughs) to figure out who that voice was. If I'm at home, I will quickly grab my phone and look up the cast to figure out the voice. Usually, in that moment, there is this, oh yeah, of course, that's who that is. But in the moment, it is often a little bit harder to figure it out. There are, of course, all kinds of voices that we know immediately. Maybe those are famous voices. I think, especially of voices like James Earl Jones. That one is pretty easy, at least for my generation, I think, to identify. Some of those voices might be famous voices, but likely they are voices of those closest to us. Voices we trust. Voices that we know so well that we can hear the tiniest hint of worry or sadness or pain even when someone is trying to hide those feelings. And there are those voices that we long to hear when we are the ones who are sad or worried. Voices that bring us a message of peace and comfort, of hope and joy. Hopefully, we all have those voices in our lives. Those people who, even before caller ID existed, didn't need to identify themselves when they called because we immediately recognized their voice. The voice of someone who has been with us in the ups and downs of life. 
the voice of someone who has loved and encouraged us, the voice of someone that we trust no matter what. The people of Jesus' time were waiting for that one voice above all voices. They were looking and listening for the promised Messiah. We don't know for sure whether those Jews who were gathered around Jesus that day were hoping that he was that voice or were trying to prove that he wasn't. But either way, they wanted to know what he had to say. Would he claim to be the promised Messiah? Was he truly the one that they were waiting for? They've at least heard of what he has said and done to this point, enough to wonder who he really is. And so they ask, how long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. How often would we like to ask that same question? How long will I wonder what to do? If you are really speaking to me, God, please tell me plainly. Let me know somehow that it is really you. Too often, I think we miss the ways that God is speaking to us. The ways that God is showing God's self to us. Just like those who were gathered around Jesus that day, we too have seen God's presence in the world, but often fail to recognize it for what it is. We hear that voice, but we aren't sure if it's the voice of God that we've been waiting to hear. I'm sure we've all had days when it would have been nice to have God's name pop up on our caller ID, to know without a shadow of a doubt that the voice that we are hearing is the voice of Jesus. We don't get caller ID when God is calling. And so we continue to ask, along with those who had gathered around Jesus that day, how long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. In response to their question, Jesus speaks both a harsh word and a word of promise. First, he says, I have told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name testify to me, but you don't believe because you don't belong to my sheep. Jesus has both told them and shown them who he is, and yet they are unable to see or hear. As we hear those words today, we may hear it as harsh judgment, or even worse, that those who do not believe are out of luck. You are either in or you are out. And if you are out, there is no hope of ever being a part of Jesus' sheep. Is it possible that those who aren't a part of the the flock have no chance of ever experiencing it? During those times when we don't feel like we're hearing Jesus' voice, we might wonder if we too will find ourselves shut out of that life. But I believe that the gate to life with Jesus is always open. That the Spirit is always at work in us, helping us to believe and drawing us into the fold. Because Jesus continues with an incredible promise. My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. Notice that it is Jesus who knows the sheep. It isn't the other way around. It's not as much about us knowing him as it is about Jesus knowing us. We might not ever fully grasp who God is and all there is to know about God, But we can be sure that Jesus knows us. And somehow, in the midst of all of the other noise in our lives, we will hear the voice of the one who knows us better than we know ourselves. And we will be able to follow that voice. Sheep following the voice of their shepherd. 
Now, that metaphor of sheep and shepherd made sense to people in Jesus' day. But many of the nuances of that get lost on us in 21st century America. We talked about that a little bit last week in adult education, thinking about what does it mean for us to be sheep and Jesus to be our good shepherd. Often people think about sheep as not being very smart. And we might initially think that we don't really want to be sheep. But sheep may indeed be much smarter than we think. In her book, The Preaching Life, Barbara Brown Taylor tells of a conversation she had with a friend of hers who grew up on a sheep farm in the Midwest. According to him, sheep are not dumb at all. He says, actually, that it's the cattle ranchers who are responsible for spreading that ugly rumor about sheep. And it's all because sheep do not behave like cows. Cows are herded from the rear by hooting cowboys and cracking whips. But that won't work with sheep at all. Stand behind them and make loud noises, and all they will do is run around behind you. Because sheep prefer to be led. You push cows, her friend said, but you lead sheep. And they will not go anywhere that someone else does not go first. Namely, their shepherd, who goes ahead of them to show them that everything is all right. Sheep know their shepherd and know that they can trust their shepherd. And their shepherd knows them. We have a shepherd who knows us and leads us. Being known by the Savior of the world and being led by him is just the beginning of the promise that we get from Jesus. He goes on to say, I give them eternal life and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. The sheep of our good shepherd are safe and secure in the gift of eternal life and in the promise that God will never let us go. Those promises are for us, for each and every child of God. We are marked with the cross of Christ forever. No one and no thing will be able to snatch us out of the hand of Jesus. Whether we are feeling safe and secure in God's hands, or we feel like we're being pulled away, or maybe even feel like we're slipping through his fingers, know and hear today that you are held securely in Jesus' grip, today and always. Through the gospel, we are invited to listen and to hear the voice of our shepherd, the shepherd who gives us eternal life and out of whose hand we cannot be snatched. We are again reminded of the incredible Easter promise, the promise of life, new life, abundant life, beginning not after we die, but right now. So listen. Hear that voice above all voices, the voice of the good shepherd who walks with us, who calls us and leads us. The more we listen, the more we will know and trust and recognize the voice of our shepherd who leads us, who loves us, and who always holds us tight.
join me as we confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all of creation. Gentle shepherd, enable your church to respond to the voice of Jesus. Give us unfailing trust, unafraid to join in Jesus' work of renewing all things. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Feed your people at the table of creation. Prepare a safe place for those whose environments are dangerous or unhealthy, especially those making difficult journeys, those who are in war zones like Ukraine, and those recovering from spring storms, especially in Kansas and Oklahoma and Texas. Prosper your creation for the sake of every living thing. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Warm the hearts of all who celebrate and all who mourn on Mother's Day. Accompany those yearning to be mothers. Help us to heal from broken family relationships and open us to receive your nurturing love from all who serve mothering roles in our lives. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Seek out those who weep while they await healing or consolation, especially Barbara, Carol, Donna, Joe, Kathleen, Patty, Van, Judy, Jane, and those we name before you now, aloud or silently. Set people in their path who can provide the care they need and wipe away every tear from their eyes. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Inspire the words of prophets and saints who employ innovative imagery to stretch our understanding. Send Christ to instruct us with motherly care. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Enfold us in the great multitude of saints from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages. Wash us in your saving grace every day guiding us to your waters of life. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your mercy, O God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit through Jesus Christ, our Savior, and all God's people say, Amen. You may be seated as we go ahead with our children's message. I don't know if any kids want to come up and join me or listen from where they are. I think we're listening from where we are. (laughs) So I brought something with me today. Can anybody tell what this is? You see, oh, I went off camera. Sorry, I need to get over here. Earbuds, Earbuds, right? So we have these to help us hear better, right? So you put them in and you can hear whatever you're listening for. Um, But if I put them in right now, that's not going to work so well, is it? Why not? Sorry, I can't hear you. (laughs) 
Yes, because they're not connected to anything, right? You can put earphones in your ears, but if they're not connected to anything, it is not going to do you any good. And so we need to stay connected to what it is that we want to hear. And today we hear about the fact that God is speaking to us. God is calling us and we hear his voice. But if we are not connected, we're going to miss that. And so it's a reminder for us to stay plugged in. It'd be really nice if we had something that we could take these or if maybe you like your wireless earbuds that you could just connect those to something that you knew whatever you would hear through these would be the voice of God. Wouldn't that be awesome? You could just walk around. I was telling people this morning and it, he was a good example because my husband was running projection this morning and he had his AirPods in his ear during worship. Just one because he wasn't listening to anything at the time, but it's always in his ear. And so it's a reminder for us, like, wouldn't that be awesome if we could just walk around with an earbud in our ear all the time and know that whatever we heard from that was the voice of God telling us what to do. We would love that. It doesn't quite work that way. Um, and so we rely on one another. We rely on scripture. We rely on gathering for worship, for education. All of those things help us to stay connected to that voice that speaks to us all the time, but that we don't always hear. And if we stay connected in those ways, um, we can be more assured that we will hear that voice and that we will know that voice when we hear it. Will you please pray with me? Dear Jesus, thank you for loving us Thank you for continuing to call us and speak to us in a variety of ways. Help us to stay connected in a way that we can hear you when you call. In your name we pray. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share signs of peace with one another. That's peace, Steve.
invite you to stand as you are able. And let us pray together. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with blessings. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ dwells with us here. All who are hungry, all who are thirsty, come. All are welcome at the Lord's table. You may be seated. <clears throat> the body of Christ given for you, men. The body of Christ given for you, Tristan. blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Tristan. Body of Christ given for you, Renee. Take me as you find me. Body of Christ given for you, Jeannie. Body of Christ given for you, Amen. Body of Christ given for you, Tracy. Body of Christ given for you, Jacob. Body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you, Bill. Amen. Andrew, Jesus loves you and is with you today, tomorrow, and always. Amen. Body of Christ given for you, Heather. Body of Christ given for you, Nicholas. Body of Christ given for you, Ellie. Body of Christ given for you, Carlos. Body of Christ given for you, Kevin. Body of Christ given for you. <clears throat> Jesus loves you and is with you today, tomorrow, and always. Amen. Jesus loves you and is with you today, tomorrow, and always. Amen. Body of Christ given for you, Betsy. 
body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you, Izzy. Please stand as you are able. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and earth, where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection, that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. God, the author of life, Christ, the living cornerstone, and the life-giving spirit of adoption, bless you now and forever. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen.